for me, I think the biggest thing that football taught me was how to overcome adversity. At some point in your life, you're going to have some tough times. You have to have that next play mentality. That cohesiveness and that working together, that's really something special that you can't get in a lot of other areas. When you practice that and you live that in other phases of your life, it, it, it becomes second nature because all you know how to do is fight. It's not an easy game. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You start to appreciate the, the smaller contributions that people make. You don't just look at the big one because you knew it took six or seven other guys who are unsung. And, uh, you know, you, you can't take shortcuts and be successful. Doing what they do to make it possible for the guy getting the press clippings or whatever it might be. In this game, whether it's as a coach or a player. So, um, I would certainly say that, um, you know, you definitely got uh, a very quick lesson in how to overcome adversity playing football. Welcome to another edition of Talking Ball with the Czar. I'm Emory Hunt, the Czar of the Playbook, here on the campus of St. Augustine's University with head football coach Tim Chavis. Coach, appreciate you taking time. Hey, how you doing, man? Doing all right, man. And you've worn many hats so far in your entire career, from a baseball coach, academic advisor, right. offensive coordinator, assistant coach, now head coach. How has all of those experiences prepped you for this opportunity? I'm going to tell you, man, I'm just being blessed to be able to have that many titles, <laughs> um, you know, being, you know, graduated, graduating out of college, but uh, it helped me be able to communicate with different people, mm -hmm. um, different people um, around campus because everybody's different. And it helps you kind of guide you around a lot the, the institution on, on helping you get through places, mm -hmm. you know, because like if you don't got a good relationship with somebody, they may push, push your paperwork to the side. But if they know you from doing a, a different type of job around campus, they're like, oh, come on there, Coach Shavis, uh, we'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, you look at the fact that a lot of times, you know, football coaches and football players tend to be in a, a tunnel. Do you think that has really brought in your scope and give you a different perspective on how other people do their oh, job? most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> I know at a lot of HBCUs that don't have a lot of money that are small, you pretty much, your your admin, <laughs> your football manager, you know, you pretty much, the equipment manager, mm -hmm. you pretty much, you wear a lot of hats because, you know, the school can't afford, you know, the other, the other people to, to help you out. A lot of times as a player uh, or as a coach, your perspective on coaching a position or coaching offense or defense is tied to your uh, perception as a, or perspective as a player. You were an outstanding running back at Bethune-Cookman. Right. And how did that experience help mold you as an offensive coordinator first and now as a head coach? Uh, pretty much to just give you the, the whole mirror of the field. Uh, pretty much it just keeps you, it just excited me to want to call the plays because as a running back, you know, you always want the football. <laughs> but it kind of balances your mind of the way you think. And that now, you know, you can't be just one-sided, mm -hmm. you know, and be 90% running the ball and 10% <laughs> passing. So it gives you a better perspective of the game and, and help you balance the game out more, you know, so you can win some football games. And, and you look at the position, you know, and I think it's unique how – a lot of people may say the position is getting devalued. I hate hearing that. Right, and me too. You, you know, and you look at players now, let's say, talking about projecting forward to the NFL level. What would you look for at the position as far as someone that's breaking down the running backs having played it? Um, honestly, you know, they can't just listen to what people say. You know, if it's in your heart, it's your passion. You know, look how many great running backs we've had, been so successful, mm -hmm. has been playing for a long time. I think, you know, if a kid loves that position, want to follow his dream, I say go for it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, get away from the social media and all the critics and go ahead and play the position. It's a great position. We both played it. Right. We both love it. You know, and I, I think it's uh, I think it's a position where, you know, you want to go ahead and do, you know, if you, you love the game, if you love the position. And, and you're seeing guys now, some guys tend to, you know, when you do like, let's say some, some high school stuff or right. some, then you transition to college and you see guys saying, well, I just want to run the ball. But being a complete running back is very important, isn't it? Most definitely. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You can't really teach a guy how to run the ball. Right. He's pretty much coming, but you got to teach him how to pass block. You got to teach him how to block. You know, you got to teach him how to, you know, 
uh, run routes mm -hmm. out the backfield. And that's what a lot of coaches are looking for. And that's what they're looking for at the next level. A complete back that can do, that can protect that quarterback, that billion dollar quarterback. Right. And pretty much at HBCU, you know, the quarterback is one of the main guys. You know, he's, he's Mr. Captain, mm -hmm. Mr. Football. So, you, you know, what I do, what I've learned is the first thing I'm teaching them is how to block. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, they come in situations where they can be a 2,000 yard back, but never block or never been taught the fundamentals of blocking. So it's, it's like I said, you have to be a balanced back at the college at the pro level, and uh, like I said, it's just something that you you, you definitely want to focus on so those things that they didn't do 100% of the time playing running back. Mm -hmm. Saint Augustine's University is a historic program. The HBCU, we know how much tradition that holds in itself, and you're looking to add to that tradition and right. add to that that legacy. Your own building your own path and. You know, you've done a great job so far. Where are you now in that process, and where are you looking to build this thing moving forward? Well, I'll tell you right now, we got some great athletes, you know, through recruiting. Um, you know, here has been a, a rich tradition, just like you said, but they never won a CIAA championship. Mm -hmm. And they were just like two or three positions away. And uh, it, it's the key. Uh, like I said, they had over they they had football for over like twelve years now. Okay. And like I said, in my sixth year here, you know, um, being a football coach here, I want to bring them a championship. I think that's one thing that they're missing here because it's a rich tradition. You have over ten thousand people at home coming. Mm -hmm. It's a great atmosphere. You have a great band. They missing that one thing is that ring, mm -hmm. and that's what that's one thing I'm definitely trying to do because I got a ring as a high school player and as a college player. So I'm trying to bring that tradition here. And, and you look, you mentioned the CIAA, and it's a really good football conference, historic conference. How tough is the CIAA in your opinion? It's really tough, you know, because you get a lot of kickbacks from Division One schools. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, kids not making that two point five. You know, to play in Division One, you got to have a 2.5, and a lot of kids don't have that 2.5. You know, mm -hmm. you have a 2.0 to play in the CIAA. So, you know, we get a lot of kickbacks, a lot of kids that uh, uh, sign Division One, mm -hmm. but they six string on the depth chart. Right. Or they seven string on the depth chart. They come to Division Two, come to CIAA, wind up being the first string guy, mm -hmm. you know, at any position. So, uh, like I said, we're catching up with the basketball. You know, I, I wish they have a football tournament like they have a basketball tournament, but we're getting there. Coach, one of my favorite questions I, I love to ask everyone when I'm sitting down with coaches or meeting with coaches is, what's your coaching philosophy? Because I like to pick the brains of guys and see what makes them tick and what makes them successful. So what would you say your coaching philosophy is? Um, honestly, it's going to be really easy. You know, I grew up in the projects in St. Petersburg, Florida, and, you know, a lot of us got fortunate to go to college. Mm -hmm. So once I took the opportunity and knew that I wanted to be a football coach, my thing is just molding young men, letting them know they can go to college and graduate. It's not just all about football. Mm -hmm. It's all about education. You know, you can go to college and be very, very successful. You know, you don't have a lot of you don't have a lot of leaders and a lot of black men in uh, poverty areas like that. You know, come out to be like mentors like myself. So I'm just trying to give back so we have more. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to give back. So you know, one of my philosophy is you know, uh, molding young men into be great men and professionals, or whatever they want to do. Because you know, you get a lot of football players. You put them on scholarship. After four years, they may not love the game, mm -hmm. but you done mentored him, you done talked to him about other things besides football, you talked to him about girls, you <laughs> talked about relationships, mm -hmm. you know, you talk about family values, and that's that's my philosophy. That's like my number one key is, you know, making sure that kid that I recruit, that he's going to graduate with a four-year degree and make, make yourself out of something. Now, do you find yourself, uh, when you, you know, mentoring the kid, that everything else around it, football, life, uh, relationships, kind of fall into place and they fall get Fall into place just like a huddle. <laughs> and that's what I call it, just like a huddle. You know, it falls right into play. And uh, one thing about it is a lot of those kids don't have nobody to talk to. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, me not growing up when I know my father. My coaches from Pop Water to college was my father. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm going to tell you this, and... Uh, a lot of people don't know this. The great Alvin Wyatt, 
uh, Alvin Wyatt, that was the uh, coach of Bethune Cookman. Mm-hmm. Just the way he dressed on the sideline, looked like he was going to a club. <laughs> so I was just like, wow, you could dress like that and be a head coach. He just had this swag about it, but mm-hmm. I loved it. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, you know what? He's an outcast. I want to be a coach, but I want to be an outcast just like him. But he done graduated so many guys, so many professional players. Mm-hmm. And, I done, and I've been around so many guys like the Eddie Robinsons, the Willard Baileys. All of these are historical HBCU coaches that got winning percentages. Better than Bobby Bout. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? So I, that's what drives me. That's what drives me. You know, my philosophy, I could talk about it for an hour. Coach, you alluded to it in the last, with the last question, uh, the HBCU experience and all the tradition, the history, you know, Willie Bailey, is a, you know, Eddie Robinson, those guys like that, the Willie right. Jeffries, you know, right. how significant is it for you to be a head coach at such an, a prestigious university and also coaching at an HBCU? I'm going to tell you, it started early for me being a ball boy at the Florida Classic. Okay. You know, and, and uh, you know, the great games like, you know, Bethune, Cookman, and FAMU, it started early for me. Mm-hmm. And like I said, the tradition, like I said, you, it goes on and on for, for decades. And like I said, it's a blessing. Um, you know, I turned down a football scholarship to Florida State to want to go to, to HBCU because of the family. Because how you know it's small classrooms, but homecoming mm-hmm. and every home game is like homecoming. Right. It's a rich tradition, and everybody loves you. You know, you go to those big time universities where you just a social security number. I'm just like, no way. <laughs> it feels good for the missus lady to call you by your first name. Right. Like Tim, get in here. Mm-hmm. You know, but not uh five sixty four. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's it, like I said, it's just like family. They treat you well. You eat good. True. You know, I don't put on probably about 60 pounds, <laughs> you know, almost 100 pounds since college. But, you know, it's just like you being at home. Mm-hmm. From the cafeteria lady to the maintenance guy all the way to your professors. It's just like you're at home, you know, and, and I love it. I love it. When, when you're out there recruiting, are you are – you- Explain to uh, guys out there that you're reaching out to, like, hey, this is a unique experience for you. Almost definitely, especially to the parents, Mm -hmm. because they want to hear that, because, you know, they're dropping their son off to you. So they want to make sure that, you know, they're comfortable, you know, with you raising their son. And that's that's how I recruit. I don't talk about the glitz and glamours. You know, we're not Division One. We don't have this billion dollar stadium. Mm -hmm. We don't have this uh, billion dollar uh, indoor facility. I talk about tradition. I talk about, you know, how your son can major and have a one-on-one with his professor. You know, and, and, and it helps. It helps when they know that their son is gonna be comfortable at a place so far away from home. Coaches, obviously you got a passion for the game of football, just talking shop with you off air, just right. seeing the stuff that's around here and seeing how much you value tradition. That's a real passion, real love for it. What does you think that you love about the game the most? I'm gonna tell you, when, when I was five or six years old, uh, playing with my brick brothers, and they always we used to play this game called Kill the Carrier. <laughs> and we used to play with a pie call in the projects. Mm-hmm. And you throw the cone up, and as soon as you touch it, you know, you get tackled, or you got a gang of guys that's gonna tackle you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> my passion started from five years old, being tackled by these big, Huge monsters, mm-hmm. you know, and I just, I just love the contact. You know, it started early for me. It started really early, and uh, I just can't get away from it. <laughs> I can't get away from it. You know, I have a five-year-old daughter, and she wants to play football mm-hmm. because her daddy lives it, breathes it. You like, I could go to an opera, but I'm gonna have my iPhone. <laughs> You know, on ESPN watch, you know, not paying attention because that's how much I love the game. You know, every day I have to read something or see something about football. Mm-hmm. It's always been in my blood. It's always been in my family. Uh, you know, every male in my family played the game. It's, it, you know, it goes back almost like 50 years for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just want to create keep going. I just want the tradition to keep going. But I love the game. It started early. It started early. Yeah. And, and you look at how the game teaches you a lot, man. I mean, and stuff that you probably wouldn't have gathered if it wasn't for football. So what would you say football taught you? 
Oh man, uh, you know, we had a rule in our house. If uh, you didn't get your grades, you could do anything. Mm -hmm. You could play no video games, you could play no sports, you could go outside. So I, I come from an old school type family where mm -hmm. you didn't get your grades, you couldn't play. So it made me work harder in the classroom mm -hmm. and balance out my mind that, you know, if I really want to do something, if I want to play sports, mm -hmm. I got to get my grades. And it pretty much balanced me out to know, you know, how life is. You work hard for something, you know, you're going to get it. And like I said, football helped me get through school. Mm -hmm. I love the game so much, you know, you know, I wanted to get the grades so I could play. And, and, and that's how my mom raised me. It was just like, you know, you don't have that, that, that B average or that 3.0. Oh, don't even think about sports. And I was mm -hmm. like, no, forget that. You know, I'm going to sit in here and study. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what I got to do. And like I said, it teaches you how to be a professional. It teaches you how you go into that job interview and you take your time to get that job mm -hmm. because you're really, really hungry for it. You're not rushing. You know, you're taking your time to do so what you really love to do. Coach, I, I've been to a lot of schools, a lot of universities, and we remember how it used to be growing up where you probably saw, let's say, Notre Dame on TV, maybe Florida State, something like that. Right. Um, you all knew about maybe 15 schools. You had the, the West Coast game at night. Right, right, like, right, right. San Diego State, BYU, whatever it may be. But now students have a ton of options. Everybody's on TV. Everybody's on Watch ESPN or something right. like that. So they have a lot of you know choices to make. If I was to do it again, and let's say if I was a senior now, what would a student athlete get from coming to St. Augustine's University? Oh, uh, the first thing, like I said, is is the one on one contact with the professor in their education. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I'm out of recruit, that's the first thing I sell. Is you know, what do you want to major in? This is what we have. This is the percentage of my football players graduating. Ninety nine percent. You know, that's what the parents want to hear. That's what you know the kid want to hear. That uh, you know, will I graduate? You know. Uh, a, a student athlete wants to know that he's not being used. Right. He's not being used just to come to a program to win football games, but he's coming to a program where he can get a degree to make his family proud and represent their name. Uh, and that's one thing about uh, a close stitch with the HBCU. We got a rich tradition, but like I said, you got hands-on professors with that student. Like you don't have no outside tutor. Your tutor is your professor. Mm -hmm do their office hours and that's what I sell and that's what I explain to a kid that you know you won't be embarrassed you know you're not gonna sit in this this stadium uh, classroom with mm -hmm. over a hundred kids and, and be shy nobody's gonna embarrass you it's hands-on just like you uh, at home doing your homework and your mom come home for work mm -hmm. that type of one-on-one -on -one contact and you know that's what I sell and that's what we have and I'm just giving back what was done to me at Bethune Cookman at an HBCU. And like I said, once you go to an HBCU, it's, it's in your blood. Mm -hmm. You know, once your parents graduate from the HBCU, it goes back tradition to tradition. It's, it's in your blood. Mm -hmm. It is easier to recruit. It's easier for a parent to, to tell a real person. When you pass it about where you work or you pass it about an HBCU, they can hear it, they can see it, mm -hmm. and they can feel it. You know, at those big universities, it's so big, you know what I'm saying, and the glitz and glamour, where they're not talking about what the real deal is, is graduating in May, mm -hmm. after four years or five years with a degree. You know, championships, all that stuff, it's all great. But at the end, like myself, you know, didn't make it to the NFL, but I got a wonderful degree, a great career, you know, being a coach. And that's what I that's what I preach and that's what I tell the guys. I was like, you know, you're a football player, you know, but you love this game. You may not be a doctor or a lawyer, but guess what? You can be a football coach. Mm -hmm. You can do what I'm doing. And I tell my story, you know, how I did make it to the NFL, but guess what? I would do this for free. I would do this when I get a W two every year. And that's what they want to hear. And like I said, it's, it's real. I, you know, I, I have real conversations. I don't have none of that fake stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can tell fake. You know, when we grow up, you know, you can tell a person that's trying to sell you a car. Right. Or trying to sell you a dream. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna pull up my original transcript <laughs> and be like, Ma, you see? Because that's what parents wanna see. And, and it's good that you've laid a, a solid foundation here. The recruiting has gotten better. The, the, the team is starting to buy in and, and success definitely. is definitely right coming next door, maybe even next year. So definitely. I definitely appreciate you taking time today, sitting you with gotta me. You got to come back. Hey, I, will, I got a surprise for you. Oh, you got a surprise for I me? I got a surprise I hope it's you. not blocking because, uh, you know. <laughs> 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 I got I appreciate a surprise that, uh, for you. I can't wait to I'm be gonna back. I'm going to do something here that no other coach never did before. Okay. And uh, just for my recruiting class, in a good spring. I had a really great spring and the support I got. We're gonna do something special here. And I want you to, to, to keep keep me keep me keep me right there on your air droid <laughs> while you're traveling. <laughs> so you be like, wow, Coach Coach Shavers did say that. Nice. You know, we got a great schedule. Our, our schedule is complete. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're gonna have a great season. And I think we go we're gonna break some records this year. Well, I'm excited to see it, Coach. I appreciate hey, you, man. Listen, I appreciate you. No, anytime. I appreciate you.